Welcome back to The Perspective. I'm Blaise Hope. With me in the studio is Angeline Arduinata of Gepi, promoting entrepreneurship. What are the challenges that startups face here in Indonesia? I think first and foremost is talent. Um, finding it? Finding people who want to start work for startups, right? Um, who want to take that risk of you know not getting salary paid mm -hmm. to them, um, and getting people who have the skills to run startups, um, and so that's been the most um, challenging part. If you are an individual who wants to join a startup, where do they go? To find their team members. To find a team member. Well, usually you look at you know your friends first. Okay. Who do I get along best and can um, you know be professional mm -hmm. with, right? And then if you don't see anybody in your friends circle, then you start going to events and see who's interested in doing what you want to do. Yeah. So beyond talent, what's uh, what are the other issues? Uh, beyond talent is I think the support system. So for example, you know legal, um, there's not. Um, a clear sort of where you can see, okay, this is what I need to get my IP and um, mm -hmm. legal setup, legal entity setup. Whereas, you know, in other countries, Singapore, uh, a lot of people go there because it's so straightforward. Mm -hmm. So, here, um, that's another issue is the legal support. Is it that there's too much regulation or that it's just not clear? Uh, not clear. Not mm -hmm. clear, yeah. Are there examples of people sort of setting up a successful business just to have it sort of dismantled uh, by the regulatory framework, or is that still just the fear? Um, I think, right, for, at least for Gepi, because um, our startups are still very, very new, so they haven't experienced that. Um, so right now it's just the fear that, oh, maybe in the future they'll get in trouble because they don't have the IP needed. So public policy and education are, are, are what's holding it back. Uh, what, how would you describe Indonesia to investors? How would you pitch it? What you know? What are the what are what are the wins? There is definitely a lot of interest right now. In, in fact, a lot of people um, say that it's a great time to start startup because there's so much money pouring in. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely, there's a lot of in interest. But um, I think after it's it's um, good investors are also very picky, right? And they don't just invest. Some some invest right away with seed funding, right? I mean, um, it's yeah. a little bit here, here and there, and see which ones. You know, it's like a, um, a gamble, sort of. Yeah. But the, the, big, the bigger investors that put in a lot of money, they want to know, they want to see your traction, they want to know that you're a good person, that you're capable of building your business. Um, so, so it comes down to interpersonal relationships. Yeah, definitely relationship. A lot of VCs are very much on the ground. They want to know everybody. They want to know how they are, their personality. So is that how you see Gepi's role going forward? A lot of Gepi's role is actually um, referral, right? So a lot of investors come to us to ask us, you know, um, do you have any startups you can introduce us to? Um, and because we work with them on a daily basis, right? Um, they work out of our space every day, um, and we see their growth. So we sort of already are doing due diligence on these startups mm -hmm. and. Um, what we say to investors are usually, you know, what they, the startups have been performing yeah. on a daily basis. So sort of doing a due diligence on them already. Um, in addition to that, I think our role is also um, need to be more emphasized on creating the skills necessary. So a lot of investors that come to us are interested in investing in tech startups, but there's not a lot of founders that have the technical background. So what we want to do is to um, give them the skills. So mm -hmm. right now, Gepi is actually starting a coding, a coding course um, yeah. to create more skilled programmers. Is it even possible, uh, really, to run a startup nowadays without knowing how to code? That is very possible. A lot of startups are already doing that. They outsource okay. um, their technical needs to other countries, um, to agencies that can develop their There startups. is uh, sort of a... If, for those outside of it, there's a stereotype that, that, that that's what's required if you're going to make it successful nowadays. Um, beyond tech, which is that, you know, that's all in all, all websites, w what do you think might be the most likely uh, field that, 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 that startups can boom in? I think agriculture 
Um, there's a lot of interest in coffee, right, or chocolate. Mm -hmm. We're the biggest, one of the biggest chocolate producers, right? So we have a startup, Kakua, that actually is doing that and got investment pretty quickly. And um, the startup founder is also, you know, um, has the skills from McKinsey. And yeah. so we see a lot of um, potential in agriculture. I think they've been on this show, actually. I think they have, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, not with me, though. With with the other. Yeah, we're with the other. Uh, Florence. Um, OK, well, look, a final word for people, people who are thinking about uh, taking the gamble and going, setting up a startup. What I would you say to encourage them? I think the final word is just, you know, I'll take this from Justin Khan from Y Combinator when I visited him during my trip mm -hmm. with Zvata. And he said, if you're going to start a startup and you're new, just focus on talking to your customers and then build your product and sell. Because a lot of um, startup founders, they get so overwhelmed by you know, all these events going on. You start something and then all, uh, suddenly all these media want to talk to you. You become so popular and they sort of forget to focus. So probably my one advice is to focus. Stay focused. Right. Yeah. Angeline, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Blaze. Pleasure. Join us next time on The Perspective. For now, goodbye.